Welcome to the call center in Madison for Big Ten women's basketball, Minnesota and Wisconsin and the border battle. Hello, everybody, along with Marty Gelder. I'm Craig Deshaun. A very special Sunday here for people in Madison because it's crammed the coal. More than 17,000 people here in Marty. Significant for so many reasons, right? That's right. It's going to be the school record, the Big Ten record for amount of people. 17,000 in this building. The first sellout for women's basketball in school history. The only ticket left right here on Fox Sports Net, so you got it right here. We'd like to tell you that. Well, let's talk about Wisconsin right now, Marty. Of course, the school record 15-game win streak and you look at the post players and extending that streak against Illinois Emily Ashbaugh and Jesse Stomsky really having big games on Thursday night. Emily Ashbaugh is really starting to come into her own. She had a double-double by halftime against Illinois with 10 points and 10 boards and finished the game with a career high 11 rebounds. And she's been playing in the shadows of Jesse Stomsky for much of this season and there's a reason for that. Stomsky leads the Badgers in points and in rebounds and you can see just how physical a player What a turnaround over last year with new head coach Brenda Oldfield. They are hot right now. She's relying on two Lindsays right now. Yes, she is. And what a guard tandem to have of Lindsay Whalen and Lindsay Leeser. Leeser is the star shooter. She is Minnesota's all-time leader in three-point field goals made. She's made seven in a game. That is her personal record. She loves to stand behind the arc and just light it up. Lindsay Whalen. Minnesota and fifth ranked Wisconsin coming up again the call center packed and ready for action in Madison join us next for the stunning lineups on Fox Sports Net. Fans of Bay this is our house the Badgers unbeaten this season at home let's take a look at the starting lineups for Minnesota and Wisconsin there's your guard matchup Whalen and Moore Von Wald and Black in the middle the Carmel and Ashball the forwards Leeser and Seeger Anderson and Stomsky. Brenda Oldfield in her first year as Gophers head coach after spending a couple of years at Ball State. She loves to rebuild programs, and I'll tell you what, she has provided some unbelievable energy and enthusiasm to this Minnesota program. They are 13 and 3, and they truly believe in what they have put out on the floor. What a turnaround for the Minnesota Gophers. I think the enthusiasm is just back. You can see it in the huddle. Look at Brenda Oldfield just talking up her team. They're ready to play. And what a great atmosphere for both teams to be in today. And Jane Albright, talk about the enthusiasm. She certainly provided that when she first got here as well. The field house was packed when Wisconsin was a couple of blocks away on the UW campus. And uh, things have been renewed here at the Kohl Center. And uh, this is a significant day, as we mentioned, a Big Ten record women's basketball crowd as we take a look now at the series history. One dominated by Wisconsin, especially over the last nine meetings. This Badger senior group, Marnie, has never lost to Minnesota. A lot of pride on the line here. Jesse Stumpke and Tamara Moore are from Minnesota, and Minnesota has a couple of Wisconsin players as well. So there's a lot of, a lot of rivalry in this game. That's right, Von Walden and McCarville are from Wisconsin, wearing the maroon and gold. And uh, boy, all four of those players so significant in contributions to their team. Seeger opens up with the first shot of the game. Misses, but Wisconsin chases down the loose board for the offensive rebound. And Kyle Black's got the basketball. Pounded inside to Stomsky. Nearly intercepted. Minnesota aggressive on both ends of the floor. And a traveling called on tomorrow more from Minneapolis. First turnover of the game. And we hope that is not indicative of what's become. We saw a game of the Badgers against Illinois on Thursday night, and turnovers ruled the game. And I know Jane Albright would not like to see that today. There's our officiating crew in the Big Ten, Ron Drusander, Joe Cunningham, and Billy Snyder. Just a minute in, looking for our first score. Defense is ruled. Stomsky the block on Anderson. She says, where's the foul? She comes down to the other end. 
Seeger again hits the shot. Taking two shots, kind of surprising. Christy Seeger is not the offensive threat on this team. As a matter of fact, sometimes she doesn't even put up a lot more than two shots a game. She's already got two in the book. You know, I like it if you have a secret weapon in your game plan, and obviously off the start, she might be one. McCarvel tries to tie it and does. And Janelle McCarvel is no secret on this team. Possibly in line, probably in line, to be the Big Ten freshman of the year. She has made a huge impact for the Gophers this season. Well-known Wisconsin product out of Stevens Point. Heavily recruited by the Badgers as well. Goes to go to Minnesota. Ashbaugh puts the Badgers ahead 4-2. Starting to find herself in this season. She's uh, taking a back seat a lot to Jesse Stompke, but when teams double up on Stompke down low, you're going to see a lot in this game that opens things up for Christy or for uh, Emily Ashba there. And when Emily Ashba can hit shots like she just did, she gives the Badgers a whole other weapon. Wayland ran out of real estate, but Minnesota gets the ball back. Plenty of time on the shot clock. This one it won't go. Five on wall. She sat out last year, transferring from Wisconsin to Milwaukee. Leeser tips this one out of bounds as Ashbaugh goes cross court. Looked like a little miscommunication there. I think whoever Emily Ashbaugh was throwing it to was one of those trying to stop in, in mid-pass, but couldn't quite hold it. I think she's lucky that Minnesota got a hand up. Quickly inside, and Stomsky is fouled on her way up. Badgers will always look to pound that ball inside, especially under the baseline. Yes, Jesse Stompke, the leader in points and in rebounds. Not afraid to get in and get dirty, and uh, surprised we didn't see some elbows flying there, because Jesse likes to be the workhorse. She'll be the, the sweatiest one of the group by the time this is done. Uh, we'll see a few elbows before this one's done. <laughs> That's what the border battle and the rivalry is all about. In a good way. In a good way. Part of the game. One out of two at the free throw line. Jesse Stapskan Thursday night missed only one field goal and only one free throw. She comes in with a hot hand. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Badgers trying to push it in a little bit more to her as we see another gopher or a gopher turnover. Brenda Oldfield. 31-year-old coach, youngest in the Big Ten. And her sister's parked on the bench as an assistant coach next to her. Stomsky misses, but Seeger is there to clean it up. Look at Christy Seeger setting the pace for this bad routine. That's nice to see. Four points early on. 7-2 Wisconsin, and a traveling is called on the Carvel. Good defense from Emily Ashbaugh as she puts the pressure on Janelle McCarvel. But Christy Seeger, right spot, right time. But that's what happens when you're when you're kind of the unheralded player of the team. You're going to find some open looks, and it's just up to Christy to be pulling the trigger as she has in this first half. Seeger wide open again. Can't get it to go from about 17. Here come the Gophers on the run. Von Wall finds a little opening. Has to kick it back out. Lost her dribble. Leaser shot won't go. McCarvel, a strong rebound. And she's fouled by Ashball on the way up. I think we're going to see a few free throws in this game. You mentioned the, the bruises in the elbows we might see, as the game should be. But this is going to be one of the most physical because you have someone like Janelle McCarville and because you have a Jesse Stompy and the dominant inside players who, who want to get their points. Well, Janelle McCarvel at the free throw line. I mentioned she's from Stevens Point. And if you haven't seen her for a while, she has dropped 50 pounds since the end of her senior year, really getting in big time, big 10 playing shape. Yes, she was right back here for the WIAA state championship last year. Stevens Point against Jansville Parker. That was a matchup of McCarvel and Misty Bass that a lot of people remember to the best players of the state. And actually, they were full players of the year. Cross-court pass, Seeger picks it up in the air and scores. It's the Christy Seeger show. Seeger with six points early on, six of Wisconsin's nine. Who would have thunk? <laughs> I don't even think the Badgers would have thunk that. She's got some confidence, though. Well, now let's remember, she, uh, she knows how to score. Did it in high school at Stoughton for how many years? That's just not her role here in a Badger uniform. 
Moore loses the dribble, picks it up. And look at the defense from Lindsey Whalen, not letting Tamara Moore go to her right, forcing her to go left, and forcing the turnover. Moore looking for the hot hand just behind Christy Seeger, so the turnover to Minnesota when we come back to a sold-out Cole Center in Madison. Part of an enthusiastic crowd here at the Cole Center in Madison. Their Badgers leading Minnesota 9-4, and Christy Seeger already attempting five field goals. Christy is nearing the season high of seven points. She already has six. We're hardly into the first half. Her season high is seven points. Career high at Wisconsin, 13 points. What a start for Christy Seeger. A nice storyline in a rivalry like this in a border battle. Plenty of time to go. Wisconsin leading by five. McCarville, nice high arcing shot over the defense. Athletic, and that's something Janelle McCarville will bring. It's not just going block to block and posting up. She can step out a little bit, shoot the jumper as she did over 6'5 Emily Ashbaugh right there. Marmore needs some help. Seeger wide open on the baseline. Drive, shot, block. McCarble comes out of there with it. And you know, not only is Christy Seeger taking the shot, she seems to be one of few Badgers wide open to get the ball. So she needs to be taking the shot. Big at a block shot. A thunderous one by a group of Wisconsin players in the middle of the pack. Christy Seeger. There are some of the bruises we're talking about. Steve. The first of many. Here's McCarva. Look at the athleticism to catch that pass and then just sort of jump up over Emily Ansbach. So the jump ball called and uh, Minnesota keeps it on the possession arrow. And now we have a Wisconsin foul. Stomsky picks up the foul, her first. Anderson, quick inbound. Penetrates and draws another Wisconsin foul. And this one's going to be on Ashball. And a lot of things, a lot of time, what kills the Badgers is this itself. There are fouls. That first one by Jesse Stomsky was a little reach in. Uh, not a very smart foul if you're going to have to foul. This one by Emily Ashbaugh, probably a, a little more welcome, but nonetheless, the Badgers cannot afford to have Emily Ashbaugh and Jesse Stomsky in foul trouble. As you see the substitution already in Eva Gadisha. Khadija Anderson, sophomore, really a big-time contributor her second year, averaging 11 and a half points a game in Stockholm, Sweden. Minnesota within one. They've gone on a mini 4-0 run. Waylon tries to add to it. Has to beat Black. Throws one up. Rebound to Stomsky. Good defense by Black to stick with it and get back. Now she'll pop for three. Kyle Black connects. What a star Kyle Black can add to a game like this. She wanted that three-pointer bad. He saw a reset twice just to get that one off. Tell you what, that little bit of defense may have sparked her as well. She wanted that ball. The Carvel, nice spin move on Stomsky. Misses the shot, and the Badgers can't hang on to it, so it's going to be go for basketball. Kyle Black working hard on both ends of the floor. She's known for that precision, sharp shooting. She wanted to have to fake and then dribble left. That's a tough yeah, that's shot. That's nice, yeah. Set herself very well. McCarble behind the back to laser connects for three. Well, we're talking about Magic Sharp Shooter. There's Minnesota right there. Lindsay Leaser, the all-time leader in three-point field goals for Minnesota. Probably the first of many we're going to see from behind the arc from these two teams. That's a pretty assist right there. A confident one for a freshman. Black from downtown. Off the back of the iron. Christy Seeger chases down the loose ball. Badgers have it in the press block. Wisconsin by one. Stomsky, nice step drop move into the hoop. Very nice move from Jesse Stomsky. That's something she worked on in the offseason was adding moves to her game. When you saw that one, you're allowed to take the one step there. It sometimes looks like a travel, but you can take the one step towards the bucket as Jesse did. Anderson, nice spin move in the lane. Blocked by Gabiza. 
Loose ball lost on the baseline by Minnesota, so it's going to be Wisconsin basketball with just under 13 minutes to go. And uh, we talked about how significant a contributor Leeser is to Minnesota. Look at the three-point shooting in the Big Ten. Four, isn't that incredible? 45%. I mean, some people can't even get that at the free throw line. You've got a three-pointer. Almost as good as one out of two, and it's traveling on Moore. Yeah, Mara knew it. Well, Moore had seven assists against Illinois on Thursday night, and that makes her Wisconsin all-time assist leader. She takes a uh, seat on the bench now as Candace Smith comes in. She's only nine steals away from becoming Wisconsin's all-time steals leader, and Keisha Anderson, who so many Badger fans remember, Tops in those categories. And Carble off the window, a little too strong. Seeger keeps it alive to Gabisa. Smith on the run. Two on three. This one's stolen away. Didn't need to force it. Whaling on the move. And fouled hard by Smith. And Candace Smith quickly comes over to help her up. And Candace just came into the game after tomorrow Moore went out following tomorrow's travel call there. So this is her first game action. She runs the point and she's in to bring the, the team a little spark, but can't pass like that against Lindsay Whalen. She'll make you pay. Five turnovers by Wisconsin, four by Minnesota as Whalen heads to the free throw line. Real nice numbers here. 20 points a game. It's the free throw. And only a sophomore. She had a big game-winning shot on January 7th with two seconds to go to beat Michigan State. Also dished out 10 assists in that game. She is what we call a complete player. Think of her as a two, but boy, she can play the point. This one tipped out of bounds off Minnesota, and Seeger wisely let that one go through. As you see, Prince is now into the gopher lineup. And here comes Stephanie Rich for Christy Seeger, and a fine hand for Christy Seeger. She goes to the bench. Six early points for Seeger. And four rebounds as well as Domsky connects. Credit Kyle Black with that one. Beautiful assist from Black to see Jesse Stomsky down the lane. Don Wald, aggressive in the lane, draws the foul. Let's see who it's gonna go against. Looks like Stomsky, and if that's the case, that's number two on Jesse Stomsky. And I don't know that there was much she could have done to avoid that one. There was a big kind of clog in the middle of the lane, and Stomsky just happened to be probably the most prominent of the Badgers standing there. But two fouls early on in the first half. She's got to be very careful to not get the third, because if she does, she'll be spending a lot of time on the bench before half. Brenda Oldfield looking on her club, giving Wisconsin a run here on the road. And you know that uh, Von Wald has some family members down here in Madison. She's originally from Hudson, transferred from UW-Milwaukee. Jesse Stomsky, two fouls, but helps Wisconsin stay in this game in the border battle for Madison. Sign says they're packing the house. The hats say they're back in the pack later today. Minnesota and Wisconsin here from Madison. Well, looking for the perfect way to spend your evenings? Introducing the best damn sports show, period, with host Chris Rose, Tom Arnold, and a bunch of ex jocks. It's the only show that gives you sports comedy, commentary, scores, and highlights. So kick back and enjoy the best damn sports show, period. Now available weeknights at 7.30 and 11.30, only on Fox Sports Net. Back to live action out of Madison's capital, Wisconsin's capital, of course. Wisconsin, Gabisa. Badgers back out in front, 25-24. Another nice cut from Eva Gabisa. She might be the leader out on the court right now, along with tomorrow more. So the Badgers are going to need a few more shots like that from Gabisa. Here's our field goal shooting. Wisconsin already 11 out of 21. 
And into Wisconsin's lineup for the first time, Leah Hefty. Tomorrow, Moore returns. Defense against Whalen. Nobody boxed out McCarville. And Yao commits the foul. McCarville trying to get the old-fashioned three-point play. I think we saw four white shirts in the middle of the lane. One maroon, that being Janelle McCarville. She's the one that came up with the board. And I think you're right. There's a lack of boxing out. Trust us. <laughs> McCarville completes the three-point play. Gophers up now by two, 27-25. And the press on Moore. He gets it ahead to Rich. Moore spinning, falling jumper. Ties the game. That's really a typical shot from Tamara Moore. Driving in, pulling up. He can do a lot of things on the court, but I think the girl she was guarding, Lindsay Whalen, can also do that. We've seen it from both of them today. Leaser for three. Straight on. Hits. Gophers up. Right off the screen, right top of the key. Dead on. I would think that's the hardest three to make, straight on, just like a long three throw. For you to make? For me to make, yeah. <laughs> McCarvel runs into a wall, gets it back, and another foul. And uh, you can tell by a couple of people behind me that they thought that that was a clean block. We told you she's the Gophers' career leader. She's made seven three-pointers in a game. And if she's freed up behind the arc like she was just there, she'll snap it. Ten points already for McCarville as Prince takes a seat on the bench. One. Von Wald back into the Gopher lineup. McCarville perfect at the free throw line. Five out of five so far here in the first half. Gophers building their lead up to five. And a foul called. And this one goes on Whalen. And Jane Albright just kind of threw up her arm saying, well, it's about time. Let's take a look at the foul situation. That's only Minnesota's second foul here in the first half with just under six minutes to go. Wisconsin already tagged for 10. Turnover. Block and another foul on Wisconsin. Well, this is becoming an interesting one. You don't see a discrepancy like this in fouls too often, but there is one building right now. Now, that looks to be a pretty clean block, but the Badgers are having trouble controlling the ball, even on the point, turning it over again. Corinne Von Wall going up against Tamara Moore. Ooh. The block was there. Obviously, they called her for body on the way in. I mean, clearly, I, there's nothing on the hand. Yeah, I, I didn't look like even there was that much contact between a play, the players, but sometimes it's the way the, one of them lands and one of them reacts that will lead the officials to make the call. Difference in the game right there, free throw points. Huge. 16 no attempts already for Minnesota, 12 points, and they have a 33-27 advantage right now. Well, credit Minnesota. I mean, they're doing everything that they possibly can right now. And they get called for the foul down low. And this one's going to go on Khadija Anderson. And I think something that the Gophers are doing that's really frustrating Wisconsin is bringing that defense up way out above the three-point line. And that's something Tamara Moore is having to deal with as playing the point right now. And as you saw just there, she drove the lane to try to get rid of some of that defense. But they're forcing Wisconsin to run the offense so far out. It's almost like a half-court setup. It's tough to get the ball inside. You know, sometimes 
when you're lucky enough to be in the arena, you can see a game within a game. And, and th this officiating crew right now is getting it from both sides. Now, Minnesota only has three team fouls, but uh, they're really hearing it from the Gopher assistant coaches on that last foul by Anderson. Of course, well, so it's, a no, it's a no-win situation right. if you're wearing the zebra. Sometimes we don't like to admit that there may be makeup calls. I'm saying that was Come one. On now. Maybe. <laughs> what would a makeup call consist of? Is there a definition anywhere for that? No. We know they exist. We just don't talk. There you go. 33-29. Gophers by four. They have the basketball. 5.20 to go in the first half. Anderson has it stripped. Gets it back. And at three seconds. I think the Badger fans made that call well before the officials. You can hear the roar from the Cole Center crowd make the call, but you saw the, back, the Gophers almost turn that ball over, but it seems like Wisconsin just cannot capitalize, just can't get the breaks right now. And actually the Badgers might be lucky to be still in this game and only down four. Turnovers are close. Wisconsin almost turned it away against Illinois on Thursday. They were uh, able to withstand the pressure. Shot clock down to seven. Moore loses control. Gives it to Black. Down to four. Fires. Short. Gabiza rebound. Off the window with one second on the clock. What a pass. <laughs> there you go. That's an assist. She'll take it. A little block that ends up in Gabiza's hand. Down to two points. And a timeout called by Brenda Oldfield, a 30-second timeout with 4.29 to go. 33-31 Minnesota, and the shot clock winding down. Here is Black, throws up the three. Let's see if it's partially blocked. She hopes it was. But Kabiza in the right place at the right time. Wednesday, the Minnesota Wild second season continues here on Fox Sports Net when the Wild take on Paul Correa and the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Coverage begins at 6 right here on Fox Sports Net. Look at that. This guy, is he creating this music at State Street Bronze? He's, nice. uh, makes me hungry. Go for a couple of those during halftime. The Beezer's numbers, eight points off the bench, and Wisconsin really needs it with Ashball and Stomsky on the bench in foul trouble. But Ashball back into the lineup right now for Wisconsin, playing with two fouls. Ball loose. Gophers. Badger still battling. The Beezer out of there with it. Wisconsin a chance to tie or perhaps take the lead. Down two. Black for the lead. Short. Rebound. Minnesota. Here looks, comes Whalen. Looks like Wisconsin is picking up the pressure on the defensive end, playing a little more swarming type of defense. But still being called for the foul. A little too tight, I think, for tomorrow morning. Second foul on tomorrow morning. Well, this is one of those things where you can almost predict what might happen in the second half as far as foul situations go. Jesse Stompke and Emily Ashbaugh continue they're going to be out of the game shortly. They may not see a whole lot of action. Jesse on the bench already with three fouls. And when your leading scorer, leading rebounder is on the bench, you need your reserves to really pick up the slack. A lot of regulars on the bench right now from the Badgers. Well, we know how strong uh, Wisconsin seniors are, but you don't get to 16 and 1 without a little depth. And right now, right. the bench is uh, hanging on. Down four with just under four minutes to go here in the first half. Time out on the floor. We're coming back on Fox Sports Net. Back in Madison where Gopher fans think this is McCarville. Foxy ladies, well, they're all ready for this broadcast on Fox Sports Net. No question about it. Notice they put the Gopher fans all the way up there in the third deck. I don't know if that's fair or not. Hey, we want to say hello to Jane Albright's crew. Mom, brother, sister, and a lot of friends who are cramming the den back at Mom's house in Graham, North Carolina, watching on the satellite. Hello, welcome. Glad to have you with us. And I doubt they've packed 17,000 into Mom's house. 
Coming up at the break, we'll talk with both head coaches and look back at first half stats and highlights. Well, they probably have, you know, 17 in the right. game, not 17,000, right? And they're probably on the edge of their chairs as many of the fans in the pool center are themselves. Jane got her mom that uh, satellite dish a couple of years ago. Shot clock winding down. Wisconsin turns it over without getting a shot off. Minnesota and a four-point lead. A confident group at 13 and three, three and two in the Big Ten. A complete turnaround over last season with new head coach Brent Oldfield. Whalen drives 37-31. Didn't I describe her at the beginning of the show as water bus? Yeah, I'll tell you what. She, she, she parted the seas right there, Moses. Torn <laughs> the water bug. Another miss by Wisconsin. Well, right now, Marty, I gotta imagine the Badgers are just trying to hang tight in here and not let things get away with time winding down in the first half. I think you're exactly right. It would be really tough to go into halftime at maybe an 8, 10, 12 point deficit. The Badgers need to keep as close as they can. That'll help right there for the first well, we saw Christy Seeger in the first few minutes of the first half, extremely productive, and now we see her towards the end of the first half hitting another shot. Keeps Wisconsin within four. One of the few Badgers actually hot this afternoon. She'll have to put up a few more of those. She is dead on. Eight points. Anderson wheeling around traffic. Van Wald shot. That's a shooter's touch right there. That skimmed the rim a couple of times and hit the glass and went in. And Jane Albright will call a 30-second timeout of her own with 1.57 to go. Her club has the ball down six. This has got to be a big game for Corinne Von Wald just because of, you know, her, her Wisconsin group and probably a lot of people questioning her choice to transfer to Minnesota rather than Wisconsin. So there's a hometown girl right there, Christy Seeger from Stoughton, Wisconsin. Four out of seven from the floor. Seeger with eight, Kabiza with eight. So that's 16 points right there out of uh, two people. You wouldn't expect to get that type of production unless they're pressed into duty today, and that's exactly been the case. And the bench will be tested today for the Badgers. The big three, Kyle Black, Tamara Moore, Jesse Stonsky, have not been a big factor in this game. So I think we're going to see what this Badger team is really made of. Candace Smith running the point for the Badgers right now as Moore goes back to the bench with those two fouls and turns the ball over. Nice pass ahead, Whalen. McCarvel thinking Brett Favre later this afternoon. Great speed, 41-33. Beautiful transition game for Minnesota, and it all started again with the Badger turnover. Gabiza turnaround shot from Candace Smith. Spot. Right on. mid-range jumpers. She's from West Lafayette, kind of reminds me of Glenn Robinson hitting the mid-range shots in the NBA, former Purdue player. Kabiza not wanting to go to Purdue, wanting to come to Wisconsin, by the way. Traveling. Going to be Badger basketball with 61 seconds to go here in the first half. They were down eight. The lead is six right now for the Gophers. How big is this possession? Very, very big to give the Badgers some momentum heading into the locker room. Or if the Gophers get a stop in the basket, exactly the opposite. They'll have the swing on their side. Well, a little bump and run and a foul called on Don Wall. And now Brenda Oldfield having a, a word or two with the officials. I don't think either coach or the fans have been real happy with the way that some of the calls have gone like that. Again, part of the game. Well, bad pass, steal, and a foul on Candace Smith. Turnovers are really becoming, becoming more prominent. They can't even make passes anymore. Minnesota is in every nook and cranny of the passing lane and just really doing a wonderful job of preventing the Badgers from even running an inbound play like that. I see steam coming out of those ears. She is not happy. Candace Smith with three fouls. Now, you know, Marty, we talked about the depth having to fill in offensively. The depth starting to get into foul trouble. Though. That is not a good thing. I wonder if there's a, a limit 
yet on this Badger bench. We're seeing another sub come in, and the steel leaders are pretty good. Tomorrow Moore is right up there, but Lindsey Whalen from Minnesota, I think, is having a much better game, much more prominent. Four steals for Whalen already. There's the numbers. Trying to build up the point total. In and out. 42-35. There's Sean and Nichols in for the first time for Wisconsin, too. I, I think almost everyone has played under scholarship for Wisconsin here in the first half. We'll check our stats at halftime. If it's not, it's pretty close. Shot clock winding down. Black wide open for three. A little short. Battle for the board. Minnesota comes out of there with it. Big shot here for the Gophers. Trying to set something up and go into the locker room with a bucket. Whalen scoop, beat, shot is good by Kim Prince. Oh. Steal and a hoop by McCarville as time winds down in the first half. What a performance by Minnesota against a depleted, foul-troubled Wisconsin Badger team ranked fifth in the nation and trailing at the break, 46 to 35. That is the way to end the half. We, had, we were hoping for one bucket, they got two. 46-35 Minnesota, you're watching Fox Sports Net, home of Badger women's basketball. Off the bench, Christy Seeger, eight points. As a starter, and that is a season high for Christy Seeger. Previous uh, high was seven points. So we're about to start the uh, second half. Minnesota 10 and 0 and leading at halftime. Let's see if statistics live up to the billing. We'll find out as we are underway. The Batchers have the basketball. Jesse Stopsky back in with three fouls. Long range jumper good by Stopsky. I'll tell you what, she has some choice words for McCarville. They've got a little spat going on on the court right now. And Jesse's not making, not wasting any time making her presence known here in the second half. I don't think she likes being on the bench too much. You know, as soon as she touched the ball, she had those elbows to swing, and she said, get out of my way. Long three, but answered by Whalen on the other side. I think that's a statement three right there, too, telling Jesse Stomsky and the Badgers it isn't going to be easy. Seeger from 17. Hit. Wow, Christy Seeger, unbelievable night. Her confidence certainly didn't diminish any over the halftime break. She was the spark in the first half now, as we see, starting out the second half the same way. Anderson loops it down to Carbo. Oh. Nice. Pass over to Von Wall, just like a volleyball pass. I think she even touched the ground, caught that in midair. 51-40, Gophers remain up by 11. Inside Ashbaugh, off the window and good. She had two fouls in the first half, limited minutes. Well, they're going to have to take advantage of every opportunity the Badgers are that they have to get Ashbaugh and Stompsy the ball while they're supposed to stay out of foul trouble. Another drive by Whalen, just as you've been describing throughout this game. Honey. She'll make it happen anyway, won't she? She'll get to the basket any way she can. Seeger again. This time a little too strong. More the rebound. She drives on the way in and gets two. Well, right now I could just say this. Is anybody going to miss? <laughs> We're going to get yes, a little eventually. break, though. We have a timeout on the floor. Tomorrow more pretty quiet in the first half. She also spent some time on the bench, but had a lot of trouble controlling the ball. So I think that was a big hoop for her. Getting some words from Jane Albright right now. But Lindsey Whalen, look at that, just working the screen and right around Emily Ashbaugh, right over the top of Kyle Black. Takes a lot more than that to stop her. And Tamara Moore answers on the other side, picked up that loose ball and goes in off the glass. So it's been bucket for bucket. And speaking of bucket, talk about the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. They're on a roll right now and they are back home on Tuesday night. It's going to be the Bucks and the Phoenix Suns. As Stefan Marbury, the Phoenix Suns come to town. Should be a good one, the West versus the East. On the Wisconsin side of Fox Sports Net is Glenn Robinson. Might be back in the lineup, we'll have to see. He was hoping to be back this weekend for Milwaukee, but they're still winning without him, so that's a good sign for the Central Division leading Milwaukee Bucks. Seven straight, aren't they? Yep. Riding the win streak. 
while the Badgers, on the other hand, 15th straight. In jeopardy, though, very much so this afternoon. That home win streak, overall win streak. I don't know, they'll have to squeak one out. Look at the shooting this half. Only one wow. miss. Seven out of eight combined. And, and we're not even two minutes in. But isn't it refreshing after the first half that we saw that was kind of laden with turnovers and fouls? It's nice to come out and just get this pace going right away and, uh, and, and see some just good chemistry. Got a good crowd from Minnesota that made the trip down to Madison as well. You see a wide shot of the Cole Center. You see too many open seats here. This is great for both. This isn't just for the bad for the Gophers as well. Lindsey Whalen is putting on a show for these 17,000 or 16 points. So, our, you know, part of this Fran Nicole was uh, Jane Albright's our idea here to donate 25 cents per seat that was sold. So she'll be handing over quite a check matched by the CEO of Ronald McDonald House here in Madison. So the Ronald McDonald House is going to get just under $9,000. They're going to have an official check presentation at the end of the game. That was a great promotion. I know Jane was very happy to see it fulfilled. And she also wanted her seniors to be able to play in front of a sold-out Cole Center for the first time in their careers. Stomsky, well, I'll tell you right now, she is on a mission. You're right. Yeah. She sat on the bench yeah. way too long. Determination. But she's being matched bucket for bucket, whether it's Lindsay Whalen or Janelle Maharbo for Minnesota. She's being matched. The crowd's starting to light it up a little bit more. Anderson, free throw line, hits. Nobody can miss. Well, the only way Wisconsin's going to win this game is to come up with some stops because Minnesota has the 11-point advantage right now. Moore spins, misses. Anderson, the rebound. Steal by Moore. Shot good and a foul. Minnesota took the possession. Moore comes up with the steal, but the foul? And it was her own miss that Minnesota had clearly rebounded, but she was right there. She's, that's the reason why she's the, the Badgers' leader in steals. Pick your pocket. Moore connects on the free throw. 57-49. Oh, vicious pick. No foul. Black, slow to get up. He's seen Gophers and Badgers instead of Stars. Missed shot. Here comes Moore to Black. Right wing. Three ball. Won't go. That was off the mark. That cat hit may have had something to do with it. Yeah. Well, she went down hard. Moore, scoop. Gets her own rebound. Straight up. Goes out. Seeger. Shot block. No. We're going to get a foul on Minnesota. Well, it's so loud here now, I can't even hear the uh, whistles blow anymore. And I don't think Jesse Stomsky is the only one with that determination. Look at Tamara Moore. A little out of control towards the hoop, but the important thing was that she got her rebound back. And then Christy Seeger there also to crash the board. And that was what Wisconsin was not doing in the first half, was rebounding as well. So I wonder what Jane Albright said in that halftime speech. Well, you can only imagine. A season high now for Christy Seeger. 11 points. She has six rebounds. And oodles of time left to go in this game. And they will need her. Oodles worth a lot, trust me. <laughs> well, we have seen Whalen do that time and time again. And Wisconsin, unless they put somebody on her... A little bit tighter. I mean, you, you cannot allow her to come down that open lane time and time again. And then she's right back on the other end to get the rebound. This time she spins her way out. Finds Van Wald and hits. Wide open. Well, even when the Badgers are collapsing on Whalen as they did that time, she kicks it out to the open player in Corinne Van Wald. So if she's not scoring the basket, somebody else is. Time Whalen commits the foul as she 
she steps in the way, but I'll tell you what, she has stepped right in the way of Wisconsin and has done a phenomenal job offensively for the Gophers. A 10-point lead now for Minnesota. They've kept that big lead that they built up just before halftime. All right, they are coming from all corners of the state for this one. Gophers leading Wisconsin. And we mentioned what the Cran McCole is all about, raising money for the Ronald McDonald House, courtesy of Jane Albright. And uh, look at the money, $8,500 plus. Wonderful. Thanks to the people in the yeah. seats and the head coach. Stopsky hits just inside the paint. And we figured this was the biggest crowd to ever see a women's event in the state of Wisconsin, an amateur women's event in the history of the state of Wisconsin. Yeah, we were talking about that before the game with Tam Flareff, the sports information director here at Wisconsin. And I think somebody only said maybe the U.S. Women's Open over in Kohler a couple of years ago would have surpassed it, but that's a pro event. And we have another foul. Fouls have not played quite the role this second half yet, but I have the feeling they're about to. 17-1-4-2, that's a new Big Ten women's basketball record. And another hoop for Minnesota. They've got that 10-point lead back. Moore, back down to eight. Bucket for bucket. I'll tell you what, it's who is going to have the intensity the longest is going to win this game here because it is intense right now. More kicks, so Minnesota gets a fresh block. It's almost like a staring contest right now. <laughs> Who's going to blink first? Leah Hefty in for Black. I wanted to check to see how many Badger players played in the first half. I didn't do that. Twelve. Twelve scholarship players. Isn't that the max? That's as many as I've ever seen. Other than in a blowout where sometimes you put the subs in in the last few minutes of the game. That's just the, you know, what an experience for the bench to be able to play in a game like this. However, I don't know if it did a whole lot of good for the Badgers as a team, although they are still in this game. Very much so. Well, they needed to have the effort in the first half. Well, look at the effort by Minnesota. Unstoppable. A big fist pump from Corinne Von Wald that time. This game means a lot to her being a Wisconsin native. Tomsky, a little bit out of her range. Asphalt, the rebound goes straight in. And plowing in to Prince that time. Looked like she threw a pretty big elbow, but this thing's getting physical. You've got to do what you've got to do to get the ball, to get the rebounds, or to hit a three-pointer like Lindsey Whalen. You can't even finish a sentence in somebody else's scoring. I can't tell you this. Minnesota is perfect from the three-point line. As you can see, six of six. Wisconsin only three of 13. Now she drives. I'll tell you what, they say this is how the three-pointer goes. Let's go the old-fashioned way. <laughs> a good choice for Jesse Stomsky to fake that three-point shot. She did take one the last time down the court. That time she faked and went for the drive, which is a much higher percentage shot for her through the foul. She's going to perhaps get the three-point bucket the old-fashioned way. Now that lane just cleared out for her. Also around the Big Ten, Iowa beat Ohio State this afternoon, 79-65. Asphalt battle, shot blocked. Well, Minnesota's defense right there, and a foul on Wisconsin as Whalen hits the back. Oh, and it's on Jesse Stomsky. That'll be number four on Stomsky. She will probably be heading to the bench shortly as Jane Albright talks that call over. She didn't seem to think the foul was on her, though. Got her hands in there. Well, it, it was the reach, and I think Stomsky made the contact and knocked her over. And she's still in the game right now. Eva Gavisa waiting to check in, but Jesse will play until the whistle blows. Let's see if Minnesota tries to go in the middle. Von Wald travels. Well, the Gophers went everywhere but the middle where Stomsky was, so now Stomsky will take a seat on the bench. With the four fouls, Eva Gabiza in. 
Very strong first half, leading Wisconsin in scoring off the bench with 10. So let's look at the clock, 13-16 now. Jesse Stonsky to the bench. We'll see her again at what, three minutes? Uh, I'd huh? probably say seven, maybe. Seven. If, if they continue to trail like this, you can't wait. No, you got to give her a chance. That's right. Seeger off the mark. She's been a big time contributor for Wisconsin, but now maybe she's being asked to do a little too much. I don't know. Well, but I'm glad to see that she hasn't become afraid to put the shot up. She's still at least shooting the That's ball. That's a good Some point. Some of them are going to go in. You're right. You don't want to lose confidence. Von Wall sure has it. Oh, Look at that. Man. Well, I'll tell you what. In her face. I have uh, broadcasted a, a few of the uh, Gopher Badger games over the last few years. Oh. There's more hits for three. And this Minnesota team is like day and night, and a lot of the same yes. players are yes. still here. You're absolutely right. I think it all starts with the head coach. And I think that just the emotion and, the, and all the intensity that Brenda Oldfield has brought to this Gopher Club is seen on every face of every player. Well, the crowd now is trying to come alive and be that sixth man for Wisconsin. Maybe helping on the turnover there. There's Stamsky on the bench. Jesse Stamsky has about 80 people with tickets in their hand in the Kohl Center that are family or friends. A lot of relatives from the Wausau Stevens Point area, even though we continue to call her the Minnesota product. A lot of family residing in Wisconsin. They're probably the ones sitting next to each other, one in the maroon shirt, one in the red shirt. Every other. More. Bombs in a three. Wow. Look at that. Look at the look of Tamara Moore's face. Big three-pointer right there. The crowd is loving this. Boy, talk about 17,000 on their feet. Woo! Badgers within six. Back at the Kohl Center where a funny thing happened while we were gone. It was a 30-second timeout, but you did not miss a thing. A kicked ball and now a full timeout is called, I think for our purposes, they call that a TV timeout. Yeah. So we can earn your salary. Box can pay Marnie Gellner. 11.35 to go, folks. 71-65 Minnesota leading the Wisconsin Badgers. Bucky right now, though, on an 8-2 run over the last two minutes. Tonight, uh, coming up in just a couple of hours here on Fox Sports Net, the ACC Sunday Night Hoop, the Clemson Tigers visit the Cole Fieldhouse to battle Juan Dixon and the third-ranked Maryland Terrapins. Coverage begins at 5.30 right here on Fox Sports Net, your exclusive home for Sunday Night ACC Basketball. Let's see, field goal shooting this half has been phenomenal for uh, Minnesota, 85% from the floor as we take a look uh, right now at the scoring leaders. Big 10 overall team scoring, Minnesota at 84 points a clip, and that is fifth nationally too. I mean, that's phenomenal. And after watching the team, people who haven't seen the team before should not be surprised that the Gophers can put up over 80 points a game. And what I think is even more amazing than that point total is their percentage shooting over 50% as a team. That is just, that is phenomenal. And, and tonight, let's make tonight, it a little 65. bit better. 66%. Well, I tell you, but Brenda Oldfield, she wanted a high-octane offense and got oh, it. She, she got wanted it. points, got it. She wanted three-point shooting up. It's there. Free throws are there. The assists are up. The steals are up, all from last year. They rank nationally in just about every one of those categories. It is really something to turn around going on here. And remember, mention that little statistic at the start of the second half that they are unbeaten 10-0 and and leading at halftime. And they have had double-digit leads here in the second half. They've got the basketball. Wisconsin, however, gets within six on an 8-2 run. Von Wald for three. Off the mark. Seeger chasing it down for Wisconsin. Gives to Tamara Moore. Moore playing with three fouls. Steal. FD threw it away. Whalen lays it in. And I don't have the stat in front of me that says how many times she's done that. I'm going to guess five. Five times a steal from the top of the key and a layup at the other end for uh, Lindsey Whalen. She's 
they, the Badgers just have, are not able to pass on the key. And we just keep saying that over and over, but it keeps happening that Lindsey Whalen just sticks a hand out in that passing lane and comes up with this, a layup, clear view to the, to the hoop. There's no stopping her. Strong, quick move, can't get it to go. Oh, that was a nice drive by Anderson. One of the few hoops that has not gone in for the Gophers today. Wisconsin has to play some smart basketball here. You really have to limit the turnovers. Very susceptible to doing that. Nice pass to Hefty. Short off the mark. And Tamara Moore saves it on the baseline and calls no, the timeout. Let's see if they're going to give it to her, however. She definitely looked right at the yep, ref she and got called it. that timeout. That was a heads-up play from Tamara Moore. Now she's got that determined look in her eyes. She's the one that drove and then kicked it out to Leah Hefty. But it's just, it's, one, it's like, a, like a contagious little, I don't know, spark that's being passed along from player to player on the Minnesota side as well. Well, if you're looking for the perfect way to spend your evening, introducing the best damn sports show, buried with host Chris Rose, Tom Arnold, and a bunch of ex-jocks. It's the only show that gives you sports comedy, commentary, sports, and highlights. So kick back and enjoy the best damn sports show, period. Now available weeknights at 7.30 and 11.30 right here on Fox Sports Net. Uh, you know they're watching it at the Capitol. You know that someone at the Capitol right now, there's always somebody there watching this game this afternoon, too. And they are seeing a good one. Seeger from downtown, just off the mark. McCarvel the rebound. Cooling off a little bit on both sides. That was bound to happen. Another three ball. Won't go. Here comes Tamara Moore and the Badgers. Hefty drive. Throws it up. Won't go. Oh, well, Wisconsin needs somebody to get a hot hand, needs someone to get a hoop. Looking for a go-to player right now. Shot no good, McCarvo. Kapisa battles for the board, and they're going to call a jump ball. That's the first time in a long time I think we've seen back-to-back -back shots with the Gophers underneath the bucket that did not go in. And this one from Janelle McCarvel. Oh, just off the back of the iron, but look at the bodies on the floor going for that ball. Every possession critical now here in the second half. McCarvel, shot block. Did Stephanie Rich get it? No, Stomsky got it. She's back in. Rich has the basketball, needs some help. And that's Jesse Stomsky playing aggressive on defense with four fouls. So Rich into the game, Stomsky into the game. Obviously, much more offense on the floor for Wisconsin right now. They've got their big three, Kabisa and Rich. Whalen has been nearly unstoppable. Look at her with the Michael Jordan move. No! <laughs> Offensive foul. Did she pull him that ball? I think so. She is clearly the most dynamic player on the court. We're just going to call her LW. 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 That was the most impressive looking charge I think I've ever seen. There's the goal. The piece of big offensive rebound. Straight up. Won't go. No foul. And out of bounds to Minnesota. Well, it's been a tale of two halves when talking about the foul situation, Marty. That whistle was blowing like uh, it was in a harbor in the first half. It was, and it really prevents teams from getting in a good rhythm, and you sort of start to rely on the foul being called rather than relying on just playing basketball. And I think now we're seeing basketball in the second half and a lot less rhythm. Through it all, Minnesota's maintained a big lead. Look at Von Wald on the drive. Ten point advantage again. That was Waylon S, wasn't it? Yes. Very LW like. 
traveling call on Tamara Moore. That eliminates the hoop. Back up to a 10-point lead for Minnesota. So this is the time when the Badgers really need to keep that offensive pressure on. And my goodness, that was a beautiful drive from Corinne Von Wall. They're splitting the Badgers' defense so well. Minnesota just, just has some incredible drives. Rebound to Kabiza. It looks like she may have been poked in the eye. Or the nose. And we will take a timeout on the floor. It's going to be Badger basketball when we come back. Minnesota leads by 10. A nice tradition at the Kohl Center with the uh, cheerleaders and the big Wisconsin flag as more than 17,000 people are on hand in Madison to watch Jane Albright's crew and the Minnesota Golden Gophers, but the Gophers have the best of the fifth-ranked team in the country right now, leading by 10 points as we look at field goal percentage from half to half. Minnesota sizzling overall at 59%. I'll tell you right now, Marty, if this pace, as well as Minnesota, is playing, barring a major collapse, I don't know if I can see them losing this game at this point. 7.40 right. to go. I think you're right. The Badgers could play the best half of basketball or the best seven minutes they played all season and they might not win this game simply because Minnesota is playing so well. Stopsky battling. Anderson comes out of there with it. Two more for the Gophers. A 12-point lead. And part of the deal on Wisconsin's side as well, they have to play a little bit tentative basketball because of Stomsky's foul trouble. Right, and she was still getting in there though, getting that offensive rebound. And things like this, three-pointer from Kyle Black, keeping the Badgers in it now. Only trailing by nine. Now they have to get some stops. McCarble, nice speed. This one batted away by a Wisconsin. There's one stop. Let's see how they can convert on the other end. And I think it's way too early to be taking silly shots and desperation shots. But it's always a good time to hit three-pointers. Well, no to argue when they go in. <laughs> A six-point lead in a matter of seconds. It goes from 12 to 6 in a timeout by Brenda Oldfield right away. Stephanie Rich is another one of those players that comes off Wisconsin's bench needing to give a spark to this team and did so. One shot can make a huge difference. We're down to a six-point margin after two three-pointers. And Stephanie Rich coming off the bench did exactly what she was supposed to do, did her job in giving this Badger team the spark it needed. Well, Wisconsin needs it from Christy Seeger. They've gotten 12. Tomorrow Moore leads the way with 17 in scoring. The B's at 10 points in the first half. Rich hits her first three-pointer, and there's the three-point shooting in the game. Look at Tamara Moore trying to get this crowd into it. They're going to need every ounce of energy, I think, to overcome this Minnesota Gopher team. Player of the game right now has the basketball. Lindsey Whalen, 25 points, eight rebounds, six assists. And it is getting loud in here. And we're gonna see right now how the Gophers handle pressure. Three ball Whalen, off the mark. Big rebound for the freshman, McCarville and a putback. Nice work down low from Tanel McCarville. I think she knows just as much as anyone that Jesse Stouncey's playing with four fouls. She's going right at Stouncey. The only thing Jesse could do was put her hands up and couldn't get too physical because she can't afford to draw the next foul. She's out. There's another freshman answering the call. Black at the hand on it and loses it right into the Minnesota bench. Well, we're going to see the intensity pick up as if it hasn't been from the start of this game, but I think this is going to be the most exciting six minutes of basketball either of these two teams have seen this season. Well, I tell you what, that ball was batted around. Minnesota comes out of there with it again. It's McCarville. She does not play like a freshman. Chomsky, way off the mark. She has been so, so cool and calm. I'm so impressed, not just with her physical talents, but the way she's handling this. Coming back to her home state of Wisconsin, being the go-to player, just the way that she has handled the crowd, the pressure, the badgers. 19 points phenomenal. and seven rebounds. She's yeah. having a game. Right. Rich to inbound. Stomsky, quick shot there. Wasting no time. Jesse takes some really quick shots, but it's allowed 
the bad news to get back in this thing quickly without using up the 20 second clock or using up the stock clock or using up the game clock. Another offensive rebound for Minnesota. And a foul on Tamara Moore again, a little bit too aggressive there, trailing Anderson. And that's number four on Tamara Moore. So two of the biggest stars on this Badger club on the floor with four fouls, Stomsky and Moore. Anderson goes right after the Badger freshman in the middle, ball lost out of bounds, and it's going to stay with Minnesota. Stabiza can't believe it. Fresh block for the Gophers, 5.20 to go. And a six-point advantage for upset-minded Minnesota. McCarvel on the floor, turns it over. And a no-call that time. We talked about the whistles in the first half. I think the Gophers would have loved to hear one there. Rich scoops it to Stomsky. Cross-court to Moore. Back to Stomsky in the paint. Off the mark. Rich crashes the board. Oh, and it's out of bounds to Wisconsin. A little surprised by that one. I thought Stephanie Rich crashing the board, and I thought she tried to save it and bounce it went out on, on her, but apparently they're calling it off on the Gophers, but there's another quick shot from Stomke. Oh, it looks like Von Wald maybe got a hand on it as well. Von Wald the other way. Yeah, she certainly had a hand in that one. Leaves it for Leaser, and she lays it in. 83-75. Well, Wisconsin had its opportunities. They got the stop. They didn't get the score. They don't get it again. It's been a lot of fast-break layups that the Badgers have given up. Those easy points to Minnesota that is really keeping the Gophers in or giving the Gophers the lead. Well, I've been impressed with Minnesota getting up and down the floor, Marnie, but they play controlled basketball. They do. It's a funny mix, isn't it? Yeah, it is. The way they can do that. They have the perfection on them. Leeser thought about it and gets the foul on Stephanie Rich. 4-12 to go in this game. Minnesota trying to build on an eight-point lead. That'll move tomorrow more over to the number two spot. And again, the pressure on defense from the Badgers. Hiding, hiding it up as we enter the last four minutes of this game. Of this battle, I should say. Oh, Wall, out of control offensive foul. I'll tell you what, though, I like her aggressiveness. Wisconsin basketball when we come back to Madison. More for three. Short. Rebound. Minnesota. Von Wald. Under two minutes to go. Seven point lead Gophers. Lob ahead. Whalen to Anderson. Rolls in and Minnesota in control. Beautiful pass from Lindsey Whalen. And if she's not scoring, she's finding the open person on the court. And she's the one that needs to control the basketball for Minnesota here in the last minute and a half. Seeger battles down low with Anderson. Out of bounds to Wisconsin with 134 to go. They need some major offense right here. Look at that pass. Perfectly thrown. Back to live action. More. Wise for Wisconsin. Nice little move of her own. Seven point lead for the Gophers. Domsky steals it, pulls the timeout before she falls out of bounds. 
So Wisconsin gets the stop. They'll have the ball down seven. It's Taking still a, a three cue. possession game. Taking a little cue from Tamara Moore during that earlier in the game. Jesse Stonsky just barely gets possession and in sort of mid flight, I guess, calls the timeout. But when you get the referee's eye contact, look directly at the ref, make that timeout signal. It's very hard to not get the call. Very heads up play by Jesse Stonsky to stop the clock. A little over a minute left. I don't know, seven points in a minute 13 is a pretty big deficit, especially the way Minnesota has been playing. Well, that's right. You need to get the points. You need to get the stops. I mean, you have to have the ball three different times to be able to do that. A couple of our big stars in the game tomorrow morning, 21 points, and uh, Lindsey Whalen, 29. And they have dished the ball out very nicely. Moore with six assists, and Whalen with seven assists. In fact, Whalen against Michigan, just two assists shy of a triple-double. One rebound and three assists shy, and the point. So she's close. She's not a bad player. Kind of says something right there. Well, Wisconsin just got the stop. Now, got the turnover. Stonky called that timeout, so it'll be Wisconsin ball. And I would venture to say, if the Badgers do not score right here, early on in this possession, that Minnesota will hang on to this game. The Badgers have used their last timeout as well. That's going to play into this last minute plus. Moore's got it. Needs to do something awfully quick with the basketball. Looking for the three-point shooter in Kyle Black. Under a minute. And wait. No sense of urgency of here. Black throws it up, misses. Saved by Gabiza into Minnesota. Sam Kim Prince has it. She's fouled by Stomsky. And that'll do it for Jesse Stomsky. Well, Stomsky, Moore, and Kyle Black. As we check out Eva Gabiza now, she goes down on the baseline. Actually just off the playing floor. Well, I hope she didn't sprain her ankle right on the edge of where the hardwood hey, floor, hey, the hardwood hey, court hey. separates the rest of the tiles here. Think about a difference of Wait a second here. Wait. They got an injured player, and, and the officials put the ball in play. I don't think yeah. I've seen that before. And I don't think Wisconsin was ready for that at all. Eva Gabisa is just under the bucket, just off the court. And I don't think anyone was ready to start play. I don't think anyone was watching it. We weren't watching, and suddenly the ball is inbound. And there you see where Eva is on the court. Well, Jane Albright is out to uh, talk to this officiating crew. And they've got her left ankle there, Marty. And uh, I think as a result of this ball going in play, we may see the uh, clock being reset. I think that is what Jane Albright is lobbying for. I don't think I've ever seen that. Well, obviously, Eva Gabiza is in some pain, and she is... Uh, <laughs> Going to get attention from the medical staff here. And she's not on the court, so I don't know if there's... What is the ruling for Well, you, I mean, the, the, you, you have to be off, off the area, either on the bench, or you have to be out in the tunnel. I mean, you can't be just several feet away from the playing court. Girl. And that's just an unprotected area. And they're going to bring out the uh, that inflatable cast and, and put her left leg in that cast. And suddenly the tone has changed. And you just worry about an injured player. I'm glad to see though it looks like they're they're playing with the ankle and not that an ankle injury isn't bad, but you always the first worry is always the knee. And you hope someone has not blown out a knee. Kadisa did uh go out of our camera eyes on that, on that injury, so we don't have another look at what could have happened there. So at this point, it doesn't really matter. We know she's hurt, we know she's in some pain, and we hope, uh, hope she'll do well here in a real hurry. And you know, sometimes those sprained ankles are not the most major of injuries, but they are so painful, especially in the first few seconds, first few minutes as Evan is there's only uh, less than 50 seconds to go in this contest, and Wisconsin now has to hit the road for three out of their next four. Not easy places to play. Indiana, Penn State, home contest against the Spartans, and then on the road to Purdue. 
So this is a tough one to absorb if Wisconsin doesn't lead, indeed lose this game. It would be their first Big Ten loss after a 7-0 start. That was a school record, a school record 15-game winning streak also on the line in this game. Oh, the, the crowd, if you can hear them, Craig, is now chanting, reset the clock. Well, I thought that that's what Jane Albright would have come out to say right away, and I'm, I'm certain that they haven't. The question is, how many seconds do you lose off the clock in a ball that never should have been put in play? got Ebba Gabiza in that uh, passed around the left leg. And I think they'll wait until she's cleared the area. As the Gophers and Badgers are both lined up, ready to, to inbound, but with Ebba Gabiza still, uh, still being put into that cart with that air cast, as she should be. Well, she's handling the pain awfully well. Obviously, you can tell on her face she's in some pain, but she's, uh, she's handling it awfully well. Not the ride out of here that she wanted. That's for sure. Nice hand from this crowd. And this crowd has stuck around because this game has been good throughout. It's going down to the stretch as well. And we certainly hope Epic Fabiza is going to be all right. And we're going to see the Badgers, I think, now turn to that foul game, trying to foul the Badgers or the Gophers immediately on the inbound. But tomorrow more is still playing with those four fouls. I think everyone else has a foul to give. Jesse Stumpke just fouled out of the game on that last play. Well, there's been no major discussion of adding any more time to the clock, so we'll play on with 47.9 to go. Anderson tries to inbound. Pressure from Wisconsin. Von Wall to triple team, fouled by Black. And that was very smart by Minnesota in inbounding it to the player who was guard guarded by Tamara Moore. And Moore did not want to give up that fifth foul, so they let a few seconds melt off the clock before Kyle Black finally came over and fouled Corinne Von Wall. Von Wall out of Hudson, 17 points. And a very good free throw shooter. Misses that one, a rare one. Here comes Wisconsin. Seeger. Christy Seeger. We haven't seen much of her in the second half. She's been the spark in the first half, but now the one player that you might not expect, except maybe today, Christy Seeger. A chance for three. The Leeser commits the foul. Three-point play is good. Four-point game. Black comes in to foul. He fouls Lindsey Whalen. As Jane Albright suggests, a jump ball for the referee on that one. But I don't think she was going to get that. Kyle Black with the foul. So this is the only way the Badgers can play this game right now is to send Minnesota to the line, hoping the Gophers miss their free throws. Although I would say having Lindsey Whalen at the line is probably the best thing that can happen for Minnesota. 81% free throw shooter, leading scorer in this game. Misses, rebound, ball loose, Wisconsin's got it. They still have a chance. Seeger, Moore, three, gonna be way off the ball. Rebound to the Gophers. Falling out of bounds to Wisconsin. 24 seconds to go. And somehow this Badger team still has a pulse. The second chance is unbelievable. What a play! Foul by Black. Oh my! Doesn't take long to turn around. What the Badgers had just given themselves another chance to stay in this game, and just like that, an immediate steal from Lindsey Whalen right off the inbound play. We, man, if we seen her do that a lot today, she blowed up the game, take time off the clock rather than put points on the board. She'll try it again. This time she hits. And you knew giving her a second chance to get back at the free throw line after just missing the one down the court, she wasn't going to miss this time. Oh. 
couple of free throws, a full two possession game now. 91 to 85. Well, on Wednesday, the Minnesota Wild second season continues here at Fox Sports Net when the Wild take on Paul Correa and the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Coverage begins at 6 p.m. right here on Fox Sports Net. You know, they're watching us at State Street Bronx. I guarantee you that. They got us on the big screens upstairs, I think. I think so. State Street Bronx. 85 for Wisconsin, trailing Minnesota's 91. 20.1 seconds to go. And turn turnovers will kill a team every time, and free throws will save a team. And we just saw the Badgers turn it over, and Lindsey Whalen of Minnesota right there just popped in a couple of free throws. Looking like it might seal the game. Still 20 seconds to play. Moore throws it up. Shot altered. Ball scoots out of bounds to Minnesota. Well, they had their chances. I don't think that too much complaining can be done about this game. A lot of celebrating, though, for the maroon and gold. Minnesota just played phenomenal. Well, with the way things have gone, one win seasons in the Big Ten that Minnesota has suffered through over the last few years to come into Madison, a sellout crowd, Big Ten record attendance, and knock off the number five team in the country. Well, it says a lot about who the new head coach is and about how much yes, these young players believe and what she has brought to Minneapolis. They're not scared. 32 points, career high for Lindsey Whalen. seconds will tick away. Six times this year, the Gophers have gone over 90 points. It is no wonder they improved a 14-3 on the season, their biggest victory of the year here in Madison. 92-85, our final score. The Gophers upset Wisconsin. Marnie and I will wrap things up in just a moment.